wanted to ask you about the presentation yesterday about the new approach to uh -huh. uh, the UN's role in cholera in Haiti. Um, two things. I saw I saw David Navarro there, and I went, so I just I wanted to ask you. I know that he ran for WHO. Mm -hmm. Is he back as a UN official? Amina Mohammed said that the Secretary General will soon be naming a high-level envoy. Mm -hmm. uh, I maybe you won't give a time frame, but is there? What's the process? I guess is I haven't seen it advertised. Is there, no, can I, you the, it the will be, be? The, the the Secretary General. I think is is considering a number of people, and he will appoint the person he best uh, sees fit. As you know, not every high-level position is. Um, is uh, is posted on uh, on the secretary general's website some he chooses to do do that with others he does not but he's obviously consulting consulting with the uh, with member states and trying to find the best possible person i do uh and hopefully we'll have that announcement uh, sooner rather than uh, uh than later and and mr navarro did he just return to his special and what, what's his post uh i believe he's returned to uh to a post uh, that he had. I'm not aware of the exact uh, okay. details. And one of, just one last final thing on returns. It was said uh, when, when the Secretary General took off on his trip that he would be back in New York the Monday, of the, the, the morning of Thursday, 15 June. So I'm looking at that, that announcement is still what qualifies as a daily schedule. Is yes, he landed, he's, he he's landed, uh, he landed very early this morning and uh, I hope for his sake that he's resting at home, but he's in New York. On, on Qatar, they've announced that they're pulling out of their role on the border between Djibouti and Eritrea, where they've had, which is something the UN has worked on in the past. And I, they, it seems pretty clearly tied to this uh, standoff mm -hmm. with the other Gulf countries. Do you have any comment on that? Do you anticipate Qatar pulling back from the role it's played in Darfur? Is there any interplay between the, the, their, their, these diplomatic initiatives and in the case of, of Djibouti and Eritrea, the actual imposition of troops right. between two belligerents? Uh, no specific comment on, on the, the issue between Ethiopia and, uh, and Eritrea. I mean, I think, as, as we've said, the Secretary General uh, has been following this closely. He's been in touch with various parties, including the, the Deputy Prime Minister of, of Kuwait, uh, and is very much supportive of, of Kuwait's diplomatic efforts. I think it's, it's important that uh, the subregion regains its, its unity. The disunity we're seeing, it serves, uh, serves, the, serves no one. Just Late, to be, uh, Djibouti. Ahead, I just wanted to. Well, I wanted to be just be clear. I'm asking about Eritrea. Eritrea Djibouti. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, just to be spoke. Yeah. And the other thing is, I've seen a, an email from Michael Moeller to the staff in Geneva, basically telling them don't do a work stoppage. Uh, uh, but the, the question, the sentence in it, I wanted to ask you rather than Mr. Moeller about is it says, based on guidance from UNHQ, staff are reminded that actions such as work stoppage or other collective action may be considered as unauthorized absence in line with staff regulations and rules. And the staff union says they're fully within their rights under their own Article 16, which was approved by the Office of Legal Affairs to uh, do a work stoppage and that they, so I wanted to know, what would you say, one, what is the UNHQ or, or the Secretary General's position on the rights of workers for collective action? Uh, and do you have any, I guess, do you have any comment to... to, to no, I haven't their... seen, uh, Mr. Moller didn't copy me on the email, so I haven't, uh, I, I haven't, I, well, I don't, I don't work in Geneva, unfortunately. Um, you know, we're obviously, I think our, our colleagues in Geneva are taking very seriously the, uh, the actions proposed by, by the staff union, and we'd encourage people to follow the staff rules and regulations. Linda. Matthew. I wanted to ask you again about the, the... Al Rif uh, region of, of Morocco, because since I last asked, uh, sentences have been imposed on a number of the protesters, a uh, year and a half to 25 people, six months to five people. And French President Macron was, was in Rabat and said that King Mohammed VI, he, I, I don't know if it's translated right, would uh, stood ready to assuage the, 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 the issues of Al Rif. So I'm just wondering if it's now viewed as, as international in that way, does the UN have no guidance at all? What, do you th what, what about year and a half sentences to peaceful protesters. Is that something that... I, I'm not aware of the details of uh, the particular case. As I said, when we have something to say, we shall. Thank you. Matthew Lee, uh, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN, Closing for Access, thanks for coming to do the briefing. I wanted to ask you a couple of things on remittances. One is, there was a, there's been a, a controversy over, the, over time about Somalia and about the ability of people to send money back to Somalia given 
both uh, uh, unilateral and other sanctions put, uh, put on remittance companies. So I wanted to know what, if anything, IFAD has done on that and, and whether the situation is solved. Also, I, I noticed, I saw in, in a press release put out by Wells Fargo, the large bank here in the U.S., citing, you know, the, their work on remittances, and they're bi very big in the field, si saying that they're, they're partnering with IFAD and has a quote from a, from a Mr. Brizzy of your agency. Mm -hmm. As you may know, Wells Fargo was, was had faced a massive fine by the U.S. government for cre creating double accounts. The city of New York no longer does business with them, given their downgrade of Community Reinvestment Act. So what I'm just wondering is, does your agency look at the same kind of things? Do you, do you, if a company comes to partner with you, do you look at its recent criminal and civil penalty history, or it, does anything go? Thanks a lot. Uh, 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 thanks, uh, thanks so much. Uh, uh, clearly, there are two sides of the, the, the question. In terms of the Somalia, we are much more... Uh, given the, uh, the, the, the overall uh, um, situation that Somalia has been going through, our investments has rather been not, on, uh, not too much of the receiving and rather on the uh, kind of uh, uh, remittances, and, but in terms of uh, uh, water management and uh, um, um, irrigation uh, um, dimension. Uh, as regard to um, Wells Fargo, uh, it's one I uh, uh, thank you for raising uh, this, which obviously you can imagine that I'm going to again follow up uh, on uh, on that. But clearly, we do have, uh, just like uh, most of the UN, uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the International Fund for Agricultural Development is at the same time a UN specialized agency and an IFIs. And on both sides of the of of, of the, the coin, you can see that is a very rigorous um, process that we put to making sure that uh, what I call the uh, the, 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 the the international the, the public good side of the issue, um, both in terms of transparency or, 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 or corporate citizen, uh, citizenship, uh, is really adhere, uh, adhere to not only from the, the, the angle that you are referring to, but for us also what is also critical. Uh, uh, sometimes we also have to make sure that uh, in uh, our program of loan and grant, uh, the, the, we, we make sure that we don't get ourselves into maybe controversial uh, um, um, issues. At the same token, respecting um, the, the, the sovereignty of the government to decide uh, uh, at the end of the day, the loan uh, for the government, the government has to pay that, uh, uh, that back. So um, I, I will certainly um, um, follow up uh, on, um, on, on, on this, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the all due diligence have been carried out before we make our decisions. Yes. Is the UN going to be in the Hodeida port? What does what the text well, say on that? I think there's a continued discussion about, about that. There are some uh, operational complications about, about a, a UN role there, uh, but we'll talk about it. What is that political? I'll let the UN make their personnel announcements. Yeah, when they're ready. Thank you very much. Okay, so we asked the UK Ambassador Matthew Rycroft if uh, the presidential statement that's going to be adopted around 6 p.m. today, already agreed to, um, addresses the request by the Saudis and Hadi government to somehow take over the Hodeida port, uh, and it seems that it does not. You can see the answer yourself. He said discussions continue on that, but the statement is being done today, so it looks like it's not in. I wanted to ask him about uh, Ismail old Sheikh Ahmed and who may replace him, uh, but... Uh, I don't think uh, he's saying we let the UN make their own personnel announcements. Meanwhile, in Somalia, in which the UK is also holding the pen, uh, the government has asked the head of FAO to be removed by the UN. There's a personnel announcement to be continued. 